Hi, I would like to present to you our paper, Deep Learning for Computer Memory, or more precisely, a holistic simulator for neural networks on CIM hardware. My name is Matthias, and this is joint work with Saurabh, Shershun, Harris, Joseph, and Max. Computer memory crossbar arrays can be used to implement matrix vector multiplications in a fast and efficient manner. Each multiplication requires only a single cycle and little power, which makes it ideal for resource-constrained edge devices. Since we are doing analog computations, the resolution is limited, since the readout at the bit lines is subject to noise. Furthermore, we might need to evaluate a potentially costly analog to digital converter. Neural networks are quite well suited to this hardware solution, however. They are quite resilient to noisy computations if they are trained for it. We would like for any chip coming out of production that some fixed neural network performs well on it without any additional fine tuning. Furthermore, neural networks can represent rich functions, even if weights and activations are restricted to low bit or even binary, which is what we consider in this work. Our approach to a holistic differentiable simulation has three stages. First, we do a SPICE simulation based on SRAM and charge domain computation, but our approach is not limited to that CIM variant. Second, we abstract these results into a macroscopic noise model. Here, the clean pop count is influenced by multiplicative process variations, such as charge gap variations, additive process variations, and noise gamma, which arises independently at every execution. Finally, we integrate these simulated CIM arrays into a CIM chip including ADC quantization and a very precise mapping of a given neural network architecture to the chip. We focus here on some aspects of a CIM chip that influence the neural network computation. Imagine a simple Linux 5 architecture with convolutional kernels and weight matrices depicted on the right. For any fixed column length, we might need to break up a kernel across many arrays and digitize the intermediate sums. If we increase the array length, we reduce the signal to noise ratio for a given voltage drop across the bit line. Similarly, for any fixed number of arrays and fixed number of columns in an array, these columns might need to be reused across kernels. Any specific instantiation of noise influences the neural network in several places, leading to systematic errors in its computations. To show the need for such a holistic approach to simulation, we study CIFAR-10 on a small VGG architecture. We assume some characteristic hardware, 6-bit resolution for the ADCs, and we report results across 20 evaluations. We first train a high precision model based on which we fine tune a binary model before we fine tune against the CAM simulator. We compare three settings. In the first, each kernel is mapped to a dedicated array. The pop count is directly binarized against the threshold, therefore no ADCs are required. For a large kernel, this has potentially low signal to noise ratio. In the second setting, we fix the column length to 512, introducing the ADCs, but fixing the signal to noise ratio. Finally, we study the realistic setting of a single array of fixed height and width. Here, we additionally observe systematic errors. For each setting, we show how the non-fine-tuned model loses performance significantly. Fixing the signal-to-noise ratio is beneficial, and the introduction of systematic errors impacts performance significantly. We can see that fine-tuning can recover some of the lost performance. Here, for example, 50% of the drop in the realistic setting of a single array. A CIM simulator allows us to study many aspects of hardware choices on the neural network performance. For example, for example, doubling the column length decreases signal to noise, therefore decreasing accuracy, but would re reduce ADC evaluations by 44%. Differentiability of the simulator allows us to optimize for hardware-specific parameters. Imagine, for example, that the noise level sigma beta is directly influenced by money or time invested. Assuming a different quality of CIM array per kernel in the VGG model, we can optimize the neural network while trying to maximize the level of noise that each layer can tolerate. For two different learned levels of noise, we can see that the model achieves high accuracy while allowing larger noise in the first fully connected layer, for example, and wanting low noise on the first convolutional layer. Finally, I would like to point out that there are many more interesting results in the full paper. In summary, we showed that many aspects of CIM hardware design influence neural network performance, and we should consider them jointly. We further showed how we can use the simulator in unconventional ways. To reduce the energy footprint of the ADCs, we might want to learn the optimal bit width per kernel and automate architecture design for the CIM use case. Thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to your questions. 
you know, as we all know, the, the ADC probably takes more power than anything else. So you do you have a have you have you trained a neural net doing the fine tuning those in order to minimize the ADC power consumption by reducing the ADC bits? From so, five bits uh, probably to, to two bits. So we, we have uh, experimented with uh, trying to reduce the bit width further, and essentially it's uh, it's clearly uh, decreasing the accuracy significantly. So as soon as you go from six bits, okay. five bits you lose some, and then from five to four so, you lose so. some more, and so on until at two bits you are uh, roughly twenty percent accuracy. accuracy. So, so the minimum is five five bits so far. You can go up. Depends on how much you're willing to sacrifice, but yeah, five bits <laughs> is really the minimum. Oh yeah. Any any ideas how to take care of the sparsity in those bits inside, for example, uh, filter weights values? Um, you you you're, sp you're speaking about the ADC bit width or the? Uh, you know, the I'm talking about bits. another topic. It's about uh, how to take care take take advantage of uh, bit level sparsity in weights. Uh, Oh, in the weights, I see. Um, so the models we considered so far were binary weights, and uh, and so you know sparsity would uh, would make sense if you start pruning away certain channels or or whole neurons in the network, and that is surely an important uh, you know approach to reducing computational complexity in general. Um, but it was out of scope of this work. Okay, yeah. So all right. So thank you very much for the presentation. I'm uh, looking forward to yeah, your further you. work in this area. <laughs> the, 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 the thing is, you know, you have these simulators, which will help the, 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 the fine tuning is wonderful. Okay. That'll be useful. Indeed. For oh, many we people. We certainly think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, that's about that's it. Right. Uh, again, just a quick uh, shout out to our sponsors. Bear with me for one minute. We have different categories. We have executive sponsors. First one being ARM. Then we have Qualcomm. We have Samsung. Platinum sponsors. Ada Compute. Lattice Semiconductor. Gold sponsors, Brainchip, Babel Labs, DSP Group, Edge Impulse, Emza, Gray Matter Labs. Green Waves, Hymax, Imagimob, Latent AI, Maxim Integrated, Quixo. Reality AI, SenseML, Silicon Labs, Sentient, Google TensorFlow, Xmos, And lastly, silver sponsors, Edge Cortex, Hachi, and Synsense.